Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahshua the Messiah. I just want to say uh, welcome to the dinner table. This message is urgent, all right? Uh, the revelations that God has given the bride of Christ in his last hour, it's, it's scary because it lets you know how close we are to the return of the Son of God. He's coming back, y'all, real soon. Uh, we're going to get straight into it. I just want to do a quick prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, forgive us for our sins. Wash us in your blood. Guide this uh, word, Lord. Soften the hearts of the hearers. Cut them to the heart to repent and serve you. And just speak through me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. This this is one of the biggest mysteries is in the book of Revelation. It says, if you could turn with me to Revelation chapter 2. And this is verse 13. Look at what it says. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest. Even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdst fast my name. And hast not denied my faith. Even in those days where Antipas. My faithful martyr. Who was slain among you. Where Satan dwells. Another way they say it is where Satan's seat is. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that. Hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, says the Lord. So where is this mysterious place that Satan dwelleth well let's go to Revelation 1 okay verse 11 in the name of Yahshua it says saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou see write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and to Pergamos and to Thyatira, and into Sardis, and into Philadelphia, and Laodicea. You see that? So Pergamos, okay? Where is modern-day Pergamos? Well, the physical location, which is known as Asia Minor, is actually where Turkey is, the country Turkey. And uh, they also call it Bergama. Alright, so now the interesting thing, and we're going to get right into this. This this mystery, uh, I know it's is going to do a lot to you. You need to know where Satan dwells. And, you know, where, his, where he desires to have his throne on the earth. Now, I'm asking you to make a commitment. That you won't click off this video. That you will watch it to the end. It's not a long video. But I need you to stick with me until the end. Can, can you make that commitment? So. Here, here's the thing. I've noticed a pattern online. And you know. A lot of YouTubers. They take advantage of your weakness. It's a shame. You know. They put a whole lot of catchy titles, a whole lot of stuff on things that are not going to get you stronger in the Lord. They're not going to help your walk in Christ to get you into heaven. A lot of these people are benefiting off of your weaknesses and off of your fascinations. Okay, you got a lot of YouTubers. They get tons of views. Because they do videos on witchcraft or on the Illuminati or something mysterious about the kingdom of darkness and videos exposing the devil's kingdom. But I've noticed that even on this channel, 
the ghetto gospel team if if we put out a video like for example the most ancient form of worship is actually one of the most powerful messages that the Lord has ever given me and he actually I had it private and he told me to release it publicly and I've noticed that is at a steady of about just under 600 views this is one of the most powerful messages the Lord has ever given me but yet the title has not attracted a lot of y'all and I was meditating on this I'm like wow like how many people are really not worshiping the Lord you know um, I know a majority are people who are not saved that just either monitor Christians or listen things are changing okay the the B system governs and owns YouTube so I don't know why all of these YouTubers and truthers and conspiracy theory and Christian YouTubers and they're all being shocked right now that YouTube is striking at them and doing this I mean are y'all for real who did you put your trust in you got to put your trust in the most high in Christ but I've noticed that for certain videos that will further your walk with Christ, you a lot of y'all won't click on them. But you will click on videos like this one. So I'm going to show you this mystery according to Revelation 2 where Satan dwells. All right now, some some believe he's in the Vatican. He's in Rome where the Pope is. Now there's two Popes. You have the White Pope and the Black Pope. Signifying the the White Pope is now we're not talking skin color. We're talking significance. That's what they label them. The White Pope is the front. He's the he's the one in the front, the puppet. But there is what they call the Black Pope, which is the king of the Jesuits. Which again I ain't gonna get into all of that. But some believe that Satan dwells there. Others believe that Satan dwells in London. Where the Rothschilds are. And, you know, Queen Elizabeth. And if you knew how much wealth is in these families. And how much land. I mean, Queen Elizabeth. You ever, have you ever studied all the land that that person owns? That their family owns? Some people believe... America, you know, is the place where Satan has his seat and where he dwells. Others believe it could be in the Islamic region, somewhere maybe in Saudi Arabia or Iran or, you know, there's all these debates. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to do this video. And I want you to see how many people click on this video. But yet, if you do a video on the most ancient form of worship, it seems not to draw people in. But if you do a video with a really big title like, you know, shocking, Satan, where Satan dwells, you know, exposed or something, you know, dumb title. Watch how many people click on it. So you want it. You clicked on the video. So I'm going to give it to you. So first off, Asia Minor is modern day Turkey. We just read in Revelation chapter 2. And again, let's just break it down. It's only one, one verse now. You want mysteries. You want nuggets. I, I want to give you this one. So Revelation chapter 2, in the name of Jesus Christ, of course. Chapter 2, verse 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdst fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. Pause right there. We'll get into 14 in a minute. 
So now I'm I'm trying to put it all together for you. You have Pergamos, right? Because it says here in verse 12, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things say he which had the sharp sword with two edges. And then he speaks. So we're clearly he's speaking to Pergamos, which is Asia Minor, where Turkey is today. Now, um, we have been to Turkey and uh, I can tell you right now, it's a very dark place. To be a Christian, a true, now I'm not talking Catholic, to be a true Christian in Turkey is, I'll just say this, the true believers there have their reward. It's a very, very dark place. And when we were there, we were witnessing and a, a man kind of came up to us and he had an American accent. And um, he had a beard on. And, well, not a beard on, but you know what I'm saying. He had a beard and he had one of them caps. So clearly he was Islamic. And he said, I said something about the Lord. And he said, hey, man, you ain't in America, man. Don't play that over here, B. Just like that. And he was actually on his way to Africa. And um, he was like, this, this ain't America. He was like, let me tell you something. He was like, you see all these people walking by? Do you, do you know how many secret agents are walking by right now? Do you know how many agents are waiting to, 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 to hem you up for being loud with the gospel? My wife and I looked at him and I said, look, we fear no man. We will proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bruh. And I told him to repent. And of course, he didn't like that. But my point is, is we, there's a certain spirit in Turkey. You see what I'm saying to you? And uh, that was very strange, man. My, my camera just shut down. Stop recording. I rebuke the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know how he operates. And you will get this message in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're, we're, we're talking about Turkey. I'm trying to see where I left off now. So, thank you, Holy Ghost. You get all the glory, Lord Jesus Christ. So, here we, here we talking about, let's cut straight to it, right? Because this ain't a long video. And I know that this is where your desire's at. You want to know where Satan's secret hiding place is. Where does he dwell? Where is this seat that is spoken of in Revelation 2. And there's certain hints here. You got Pergamos, right? Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. And we happen to actually go to Turkey physically to testify to y'all of the darkness there. There is an ancient pers uh, a principality there that is just, I'm telling you. But what I'm going to say to you. And Father God, please, Lord, touch the heart of the hearers to receive this message. Bind the devil from hindering anyone that hears this message from not receiving it. Bind the enemy and stop him from hindering the people to catch this message. Jesus Christ, you reach them, Lord. Reach them, Lord. Supernaturally, Lord. Reach them in Jesus Christ's name. Here's the mystery. For a lot of y'all. For a lot of y'all. Satan is dwelling in your heart. That's where his kingdom is. And I know that's hard to hear. And go ahead, rebuke it. But if you're a true follower of Christ, you clearly know I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to y'all that don't want to know about Christ. You don't want to learn how to worship better. You don't want to learn how to pray better. You don't want to learn how to get closer to Him. You don't want to learn about Christ. But if a video like this pops up, you click on it. You want to know about Satan. You want to know about His kingdom. You want to know about the Illuminati. You want to know, you want to know, you want to know. Now, you can't click off this video. This video ain't even long. You need to hear this. 
This is the mystery. For a lot of y'all, the kingdom of Satan has been dwelling in you. Don't, don't resist the Holy Ghost. I am striving to reach out to you. Because you know you clicked on this video because you wanted to know one more thing about the devil. All the while you claim to be against him. But yet, why are you so fascinated with him and his entire kingdom? Not just spiritually, but the Illuminati, the Bohemian Grove, Trilateral Commission, Freemasonry. You know what I mean? All of these things, you're very interested in that. But when it comes to knowing Christ, though, you know deep down a lot of y'all don't have the desire. You won't click on godly videos with godly titles. If I come out with a video that says, um, oh my God, I found out the secret to really truly living with Christ. It'll probably get like 500 views within a month. That is insane to me. Honestly, honestly, brothers and sisters, ask yourself, where is your heart? What the Bible talk about where the treasure is, where your heart is at, right? So where is your heart right now? Because you clicked on this video, you want to know where Satan's seed is. You don't even know he's been setting up a throne in you. So let's talk about it though. Because in Isaiah 14, it says he will be like the Most High God. He will set up his throne. But if you go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if we just go there real quick, I want to show y'all now. We, the, the train is leaving. We're pleading with you to get your ticket now and get on this train. That's, we out of here. We're getting ready to leave this place. You hear what I'm saying to you? Second Thessalonians. Y'all there. Chapter 2, verse 4. Look at what it says now. It says, Who opposes all and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, there's a natural uh, revelation to this, right? Because we know that in Israel, they are already got the plans to build the temple, right? But what are they going to do in this temple? They're going to offer lambs? They're going to do the rituals? They're going to commit blasphemy. Because God the Father gave one lamb once and for all. And that's why I'm telling you, so many of y'all that are getting too deep into the Hebrew roots, okay? Yes, we ought to know about that. Salvation is of the Jews. It came from Jesus Christ was a Hebrew. He was a uh, 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 of the tribe of Judah, right? But some of y'all believers, you're getting too deep into the Hebrew roots now, fighting again about the name of Christ. Which one is it? You know what I'm saying? You want to go back to the law. So let me ask you a question. What are you going to do when you're so dedicated to the Torah, you're so dedicated to impressing the Jews and doing all these, what are you going to do when they have the temple built and they're killing lambs on the altar? What, what, what are you going to do? You are going to commit blasphemy because God Almighty gave his son as the eternal, the once and for all sacrifice. When Christ was offered up, any other lamb after him is, the is one of the most highest forms of disrespect that you can do is kill another lamb for your sins after God gave his son as the lamb. So you better be careful. You better not get bewitched, like Paul said to the Galatians in chapter 3. So we know there's an actual temple, but according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16, and also in, I believe it's 6, 19, or 6, 9, yeah, 6, 19, that we are the temple of the Most High God. So if we also are the temple, that would mean that the enemy also wants to dwell in us, you and I, he wants to sit in this temple. See, what you don't realize, sister and brother, is that our bodies are, are so supernaturally created. You just don't even know how special you really are. Your brain is the greatest computer. There's the, the Illuminati, they cannot make a computer better than your mind, better than your brain. They never can. They never will. 
We are the greatest computers. We have the greatest memory base data stored up from the day we came out of the womb. Our brain has recorded everything. The Lamb's Book of Life has names, but there's another book in Revelation called the Book of Your Life. It is your actual DNA. Your mind has stored up every thought, every sight, every sound, every smell, every touch has been recorded and put away. You just don't know it because you can't remember everything. You can remember pieces of your past, but everything has been stored away in a memory database that God created. So your your body is phenomenally created. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Follow me now as I follow Christ. Your actual body is is has a replicated temple within it. It's a replica of the temple of the Most High God. Because the Bible says that the Almighty sits on the throne and there's four beasts that surround the throne. Well, the Bible says in Peter that Christ comes to live in your heart, right? So the heart is the throne where Christ wants to sit. And it's interesting how in heaven there's a throne that has four beasts surrounding it. Your heart has four chambers. You get it? So four beasts in heaven that surround the throne of God. Your heart has four beasts or four chambers that surround that throne where Christ is. In heaven, there's 24 elders that surround the throne of God, 12 and 12. It just so happens to be that your body has 12 ribs and 12 ribs that surround the heart or the throne of Christ or the throne of Christ. And the mystery goes on and on and on. So it would only it would only be logical that Satan, he wants to dwell there. He wants to dwell in your heart, sister, brother. He, that's his desire, far more than an earthly temple that the Jews can make. You, you get, he wants to dwell in you. So while you were fascinated, when I was talking about maybe it's in Rome, maybe the seat of Satan is in London, maybe it's in Saudi Arabia or America, where is this mysterious seat? All the while, I was just sitting there looking at you going, what if his seat is in you? What if Satan has his kingdom growing on the inside of you and you don't even know it? Because Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is what? Within. Not pray you get convicted because you know very well when you balance it out, you're far more fascinated learning about Satan. And a lot of y'all think you're, you're, harm, you're not doing any harm because a lot of y'all are not trying to learn about Satan to worship him. But what you don't realize is your fascination to learn about him, his evil kingdom, whether in the spiritual realm or uh, you know, or uh, the actual earthly kingdom with the Illuminati and all of these, you know, these uh, conspiracy theories and everything, you're giving him, hom you're paying homage to him by focusing on him. It don't matter how you look at Satan, focusing on him is all he wants. While True saints of God who are very thin in between, we're in the wilderness right now, you don't know about us, we are focused on Christ, we want to know about Him. Paul said that I may know Him in the fellowship of His sufferings. The Bible over and over again through many of the New Testament books talks about you got to know Christ. Peter said in his letter, if hope and, uh, and brotherly kindness and godliness and love and all of these things be in you, he said, you shall neither lack nor be barren in what? The knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That word knowledge has the word know in it. It's to know Christ and to know him deeper. How is it I release a video called the most ancient form of worship and a lot of y'all didn't click on it. It shows me where your heart is at. Who is living in you? Who? Because if Christ ain't throned up in there, Satan immediately has taken that throne. You, it, It's not empty. Never ever think that. You're not empty. You either have Christ growing and expanding his kingdom in you, or the devil is already in expanding his kingdom. Now, Satan himself dwelt literally inside of Judas. He entered into Judas, right? So, Satan may not be actually physically dwelling in you right physically now because he's one 
angel. He's a cherub. He can't be everywhere at once. That's God that can do that. But his throne could be set up in you. And when he pleases, he will come and sit in you or have another demon sit in you as a kind of like a, um, you know, like when a king goes off on a journey, he'll have a man take over as a temporary king until that king gets back. Well, Satan has demons and evil spirits that will try to take over your body and reign in there. And, and when he comes and he feels like he wants to enter into your body, he can do so if you're not walking right, if you're not under the blood, and if you're not living righteous and holy. And, and, let me tell, and let me tell you something. True servants of the Most High God get revelation directly from Christ. The Lord will tell us things about the enemy. We don't have to do hours of studying. The Lord will just show us what witches do. He'll show us the mystery of what the enemy is trying to do. Just simply, Paul said, I didn't get it by man. It was by revelation, he said. The knowledge of Christ. It's almost like God will literally upload it or download it into our spirit man, whatever he wants us to know. I'll tell you the mystery of why they have the image of the Baphomet being up. If you notice, what they're trying to do is they want Baphomet statues in every state now. And it's going to happen, okay? Because this is how the laws and how things have been have been set up. I can actually use a word for that one. That's why they've been set up the way they are. So that way, they have equal rights. And that's why in Florida, they had a Church of Satan after school program where they were giving little children coloring books and books on the Baphomet. But let me tell you the mystery. It's very simple. The reason why the Baphomet has the DNA strand when he's sitting down is his desire. It's not a coincidence that as he's sitting on a throne, sitting down in a seating position representing sitting on a throne, he has the DNA strand coming out of his, his groin area is because his desire is to be seated in the DNA of you, your body. That's as simple as it is. So this message, in my personal opinion, is a life-changing message because you are the temple of the Lord. So wouldn't it make absolute sense and wisdom that Satan would want to dwell in that temple when he said he shall be like the Most High? If you know anything about the Areopagus, right, in the book of Acts, these were the Greeks, Right? These were people, it, 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 real quick, if we just go to it, like I said, this message ain't long. Okay? I don't want to take too much of your time. I just needed to reach you. you. I don't think you comprehend how much Christ is reaching you. He's vis He's ta trying to talk to you in your dreams. He's trying to warn you through strangers. He's warning you through this ministry to get right and stop focusing on the enemy all the time. Yes, there are seasons. We, The Bible says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, right? The children of Israel went out and they spied on the enemy, but they didn't stay there. You understand? They left. A lot of y'all stay in the land of the enemy, spying on them all. You become fascinated with spying on Satan. And you, you don't, I, and I pray Jesus, break that spell off of you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Areopagus. This is in the book of Acts chapter 17. Now, I want you to read the entire chapter. Right? I, I want you to see this here. Look at verse 20 and 21. They said, For thou bring certain strange things to our ears and we would know therefore what these things mean and it says in verse 21 for all the Athenians and strangers which were which were there spent their time in nothing else listen to this but either to tell or to hear some new thing now when Paul got there it was all these false gods and statues but did you just catch that they spent all their time and just looking for something new to know. A lot of y'all got the curse 
of the Areopagus. That's all you do online. You want to know about the next thing. You want to know about some new thing about the devil, the Illuminati, some new witchcraft thing. And, and this is what frustrates me is there's so many phony YouTube channels and a lot of fake so-called Christian teachers that are just, you don't even realize they're, they're playing witchcraft on you, teaching you about witchcraft. My, the true followers of Christ, for all our partners out there, you need to make sure you keep praying for us. Pray for me, Lioness, the boys, all the leadership, because giving you messages like this, it, it's not, I'm telling you right now, it's like sometimes when you give a message like this, it really stirs up the enemy and Christ strike him down. Because I'm exposing something that a lot of these false teachers don't want me to tell you. There's a lot of so-called Christian teachers that do online ministry. 40, 50, 60,000 subscribers. They get like 20,000 views per video within the first week. And they'll just do videos over and over and over and over again on deliverance. Deliverance. Always teaching you about deliverance. Right? Always teaching you about witchcraft and how to operate, how to know a witch and how to do this. Right? But I, I, I took a step back and I'm looking at this. And I'm like, they're bewitching people by teaching them about nothing but witchcraft. Because what they're doing is they're playing on your weakness. Because they know you have a fascination for the enemy. And instead of telling you to repent and seek the face of Christ, to read your word, to fast, and to get into the Holy Ghost. Because if you do that, guess what's going to happen to all the spells that have been on your life and all the powers of darkness? It's going to melt like it's going to melt like wax before the fire. This is why this ministry gets persecuted the way it does. And thank God for the true saints of the Most High God who love the Lord and love us. And they're in this fight with us. Because you know the real because real recognizes real. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you should be able to hear his voice in us. And this is why we get the persecution. It's because our goal is not to, to take advantage of you. By putting, I could do that all day long, y'all. I could have partnered up with YouTube and went a completely different route. But we ain't no sellout. You understand? That's why all these Christians now are crying. <laughs> YouTube, they're taking away our money. What's popping? See, a lot of these YouTubers that were supposedly teaching you were making money off the commercials, partnering up with YouTube. They're coming out with retarded, catchy videos with clickbaiting. To get you to click on it so they can get a dollar in the mail. A check. And you see judgment is coming on people now. Because they're not feeding the people. Our job and our goal through Christ in this ministry is to get you to be able to stand on your own. And to get into the presence of the Holy Ghost. To live righteous and holy. And guess what? You won't need a million teachings on witchcraft. You won't need a million teachings on how to be delivered. Show me in the book of Acts where they had to sit down every single day of the week to learn how to be delivered. They got to Christ and Christ started to grow on the inside. And when they learned about deliverance, it didn't take over their whole life. How is it you got to get delivered every other day of the week? Can't you see it's a spell within the spell? All the while, they're trying to teach you like, oh, I'm the, I, my ministry's showing you the, the secrets of witchcraft and 10 steps to get delivered. And next week, 15 steps to get delivered. And they're just using you. They don't want you delivered because they know if you truly get delivered, they, you don't need their YouTube channel anymore. You see, here we are. We're here teaching you about Christ. This ministry, when we expose the Illuminati, it's scattered. It's not every video. The majority of our videos, and you should be able to tell the tree by its fruit, is all uniquely different. And they're all uniquely formatted to get you closer to Christ and to live righteous. So that's the miss, that's the secret they don't want you to know is they keep pulling you in with these stupid messages that ain't doing nothing for you. They're novices that get puffed up and lifted up by how you click on their videos and it's not edifying you. Yes, we need videos on deliverance. That's not what I'm saying. But when they 
continue to pull you in with the same stupid message. They just reformat it, repackage it. You know, witchcraft series, number one. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, dream world uh, series. Number one, number two, dreams. If you have dreams about dogs, it means this. And if you have dreams about birds, it means this. And if a dolphin happens to er er by you in the water in your dream, God is saying this. Man, that's a bunch of trash. If God shows you revelations, that's one thing. But they are loving it. And you the one that keeps clicking. Now let's see how many video views this video gets. All because it says Lucifer. I found where Lucifer actually dwells. Wow! Exclamation point. And you were like, oh shit, click. Ooh, I want to look at where does Lucifer dwell? What, what, what good would it do you? You're going to go there and try to shoot at him? You should. Listen. The secret is, this world, we ain't even supposed to even care about this earthly kingdom. This worldly kingdom. It's not, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. This is not our place. Jesus said, I am not of this world. If I did, my angels would slaughter every single one of y'all. See, this is what you're not getting. I'm here to break the spell off of you in the mighty name of the Son of God. And you fight me? Look, hey. I can't force you to do nothing. We don't operate like that over here. We don't operate out of manipulation, intimidation, and domination. Either you ride with us or it's all good. I love you, deuce. See you around. But we don't have time for this. What is your appetite? What do you desire? Now, here's the real mystery. You ready for it? Well, we read in Revelation. Now, I want you to see this now. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. 12, when he's speaking about 13, he says unto the angel of the church and where Pergamos write these things, saith he that had the sharp two-edged sword. Now, the two-edged sword is a direct reference to the word of God. So this is a mystery here because you have the word Pergamos, but then you have the word of God mentioned, hidden right there. So I'm like, okay, so Asia Minor. And I'm paralleling it all. And that's when it hit me. The Lord showed me what Pergamos means in the original Greek language. It literally means height or ele elevation. Height or elevation. And then after doing my research, Turkey or Asia Minor and Pergamos in this area, it was well known for their knowledge. They had a library with over 200,000 volumes. Look it up yourself. So that's when it hit me. A lot of y'all, you worship knowledge. You don't worship Christ. Your knowledge is the internet. YouTube. Learning about witchcraft. Learning about conspiracies. Learning about spells and how to break curses. All the while, if you would worship Christ, if you would seek Christ, you wouldn't need 50,000 videos on how to break curses. Because simply getting in Christ and repenting and living righteous and holy, Jesus would break curses off of you without you even knowing it. And deliverance prayers would not need to be done every, every week. When we do deliverance prayers, they're real. People can test. I got a line of saints that will testify to the power of the Holy Ghost in this ministry. Real manifestations of demons coming out crying and people foaming at the mouth. Oh, it's real. But that's not the ministry. Jesus Christ is the ministry. And if you would seek Christ and stop worshiping knowledge, because remember, Pergamos means height or elevation. A lot of y'all want to lift up. You see, you want to be high, You want to elevate. You want to raise up your knowledge. You want to know, you want to know, you want to know. Like the Areopagus, the Athenians, like those people, they were always looking for something new. Always looking for something new. You're online. You're looking for the new thing to learn. You become addicted to knowledge. But the Bible says knowledge puffs up. Where's your love? Because the Bible says love edifies. Knowledge is good when it's edified with love. So yes, I found out the mystery. And for a lot of y'all, don't look to Rome. 
Don't look to London. Don't look to the to the White House. Don't look to the Islamic um uh, countries. You want to know where Satan has his seat? You want to know? Stop looking around. Is he? Does he got a seat in your heart? Are you fascinated with his kingdom and you ain't even focused on Christ? You won't click on a video about the how to worship Christ. But you won't click on a video how to fast. You won't click on a video, but you're going to click on a video like this. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you got to cut someone open to get that cancer out of them. And I know some of y'all are feeling some type of way. But guess what? I got to cut you with that double-edged sword. Didn't he just mention it? He said, with a two-edged sword? What do you think he got a two-edged sword for? To look good? To hang on on a wall? No, he came to use that sword. And I will cut you with the word of God out of love to open you up and get that evil cancer out of you. And with the love of Christ, stitch you back up and send you on your way. Anyways, we got more videos coming, okay? We're, we're going to be doing a whole lot more, Lord willing, okay? Um, we have we have messages, milk and meat messages, right? Uh, we'll be releasing meaty messages and milk messages. Do not underestimate the milk messages. Sometimes you got to go back to the basics, y'all. Okay, we want to feed you and help you get to heaven. Yes, we've asked y'all to commit, to be a partner, to support the movement. What? Yeah, of course. <laughs> We're fighting a beast. But our goal is to feed you. Our goal is to see you become strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That no matter what, you'll be able to make it, even if it's on your own. What if, what if five months from now... Everything is shut down and you got no more support online. You got no more people to talk with and call. What if phone lines are gone? What if, what if the enemy really shuts everything down to really wipe out the Christians on the earth and to strike at them and to bring in the new world order, right? What if, what if you have no more of this? How strong are you? Can you make it? Sister, for real, brother, I'm talking to y'all. Will you truly refuse the mark of the beast? Are you willing to die to live for Christ? Are you sure? The, the, the test is going to be who's dwelling in you. That's the mystery, right? Is Christ thrown there? Is he expanding the kingdom of heaven within you? Because there's a direct parallel. As Christ was expanding the kingdom of heaven on earth, when he came, he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he gave the great commission to the apostles to spread the gospel. But what you don't know is parallel. As the kingdom of heaven spreads on the earth, as the gospel of Jesus Christ spreads on the earth, the kingdom of heaven got to spread in us. It got to expand within us. I'm done. I'm done. Love y'all. Pergamos, height and elevation. Are you lifting up yourself instead of lifting up Christ? Why don't you go back and click on some of our messages that we have preached through prayer and fasting and tears. Go back and learn from some of these older messages that we have on our YouTube channel. Messages that will change your life. Thanks to Christ. I'm just a vessel. We're just vessels. He gets all the glory. We just want you to be fed. Stop being fascinated with the enemy in his kingdom. See, a lot of y'all think you were doing good. You're like, yes, Lord, I'm the scout. I'm always studying the enemy and learning about spells and curses and how dreams and what they mean and all of these mysteries. All the while, the devil was winning. He was laughing. Because all he wants is for you not to know Christ and not to study Christ and not to walk with Christ. Y you know what you were? You were the, oh, this is heavy. You were that Israelite spy that Moses sent in but never came back. You never came back. You stayed in the land and got caught in the spell of spy where you just spied on the enemy, spied on the enemy, and you never went back. Come back. 
to the basics of the gospel. Get to know Christ. Can we pray? Can you pray with me? I love you very much. Lioness loves you very much. We all from this ministry love you, no matter who you are. No matter if you're a partner with us or not, we love you so much. No matter if you're an enemy, maybe you're a witch, we love you. You're on the wrong side. You need to come to Christ. Okay, but for y'all Christians that have been convicted and you clicked on this very excited and you thought you was going to find out where Satan actually is seated. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Even if you think you don't, can you pray this prayer with me? I want you to say this. Say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God, Lord, forgive me. Forgive Forgive me if I've lifted myself up to heights and elevations like the word Pergamos means. Lord, if I have been fascinated and more focused on Satan and his kingdom, using the excuse that I want to know these things and spy on the enemy, I repent, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me in your holy blood. Renew the spirit of my mind. And Lord, I right now with my own will, I remove any buildup of Satan's throne in my heart and body. I rip it out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that my heart and body is now the throne of Jesus Christ. Lord, break every spell that has been placed on me or is on me or could be on me that has me fascinated in a, a ins, insane circle in the wilderness. Where people, especially on YouTube, who claim to be deliverance ministries, are benefiting off of me never getting delivered. Lord, break that spell off of me in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, I repent for being like the people of the Areopagus who always wanted to learn the latest trend and know the newest thing. Instead of learning Christ, God. I know that I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, I want to start fresh with you right now. Because I know time is running out. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you, Lord. I want to have knowledge of you. Replace, Lord, all this foolish knowledge I've built up about so much stuff that does nothing to get me to heaven. Lord, fill me with whatsoever is good, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is holy, whatsoever is of virtue and righteousness. According to Philippians, may I think on these things, Lord Jesus Christ. I now reject Satan's Seat out of my body. I cast you out, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not be your human Pergamos. I will not try to be at heights and elevation of knowledge, but I will lift up Jesus Christ in me. Lord, live in me, dwell in me, grow in me. Sit in my heart as the king of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, renew the spirit of my mind and give me a new, the same mind that was in Christ, Lord. Break the addiction of spying on the enemy. All these YouTube videos. And break the addiction of being fascinated with learning teachings about witchcraft being exposed and all these things that get me nowhere in life. Help me, Lord. To seek your face. That way when you send me on a mission to spy. It's only for a small period of time. And I'm back where I need to be. Right by Jesus' side. My greater Moses. Who delivered me from the spiritual Egypt. I love you Lord. Forgive me Jesus. Thank you for this message. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Right now, if you repented, I want you to just stay there right now. I just want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All others that didn't take the message serious, you're free to go. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Yeshua, the Messiah, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the sound of my voice as Christ in me, I bind and break every spell that's been placed on you through people that try to manipulate and use you to gain and get to get gain over you, to keep you arrested in your development and teach you about just things that are not going to benefit you. But don't teach you about Christ and don't teach you how to grow in the Lord. I break that spell in Jesus Christ's name. I break the fascination of evil in Jesus Christ's name. I smash Satan's throne in you and I command whatever is dwelling in you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, right now, Father, wherever they're at, send angels to fight for them, God. Send angels, oh God. And if they got to fast it out of them, God, give them the will, power to fast and pray these evil beings out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give them a new and fresh hunger for the knowledge of Christ, not the knowledge of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, renew them, God. And cause them to be strong in you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. I also want you to read 2 Timothy chapter 3 when you get a chance. And I want you to read what the last days will be like. And I want you to go through every character trait of the last days personality. And I want you to be honest. And I want you to make a checklist of how many are in you. And I want you to commit to prayer and fasting. Okay? Not just a little half a day of fast. You're going to have to do something that's going to really war against whatever could be on the inside of you. We got a Lord willing, we got a lot of messages coming. But take your time and go back into our archives and look at some of the old messages that will really draw you closer to Christ. Because it's the word of God made alive. And special thanks to all our partners. We love y'all so much because you prove your love not only by your word and your mouth, but your deeds. You have shown your love by your actions. And we thank you for your prayers, uh, fellowship, and all the support you do. We love you so much. And if you want to be a partner, go to theghettogospel.com. Go to the contact and say, I want to be in this fight and become a partner. Partner just means family member. All right. We got more videos coming. Lord willing, all glory to Christ. I thank you for staying to the end of the video. You needed to know this. Because all these false little YouTubers. Now thank God for the real YouTubers that are out there. They're, they're few in between. But we thank God for them. But most of them, they do clickbait. They do all of this. So I wanted to draw you in. In hopes that you would be convicted. Shame. Shame on people. That are so fascinated with the enemy. Claiming to be Christian. All the while not paying attention to Christ. Not even knowing him. Honestly ask yourself. How much do you know about Christ? Oh he's the son of God. He died. Okay. What about his personality? How much do you know about him? How personal do you know him? Do you know what his voice sounds like? And more important and more terrifying. Does he know you?